So measurement is is something that we have been talking about, and we will be using two ideas, which is validity, and validity is the most important question that has to be answered when we uh, talk about the measures of our construct. The whole question that we want to ask is whether the operationalization of our construct, okay, the the measure that we have created is an accurate representation of the construct that we wanted to capture. And that becomes the validity question. Okay. And if you are, if you do not have a good measure, obviously your results would not be proper. So I don't need to elaborate on this. So your value of the research that you are going to do depends on how good your measure is and how good you can, how well can you model it in your measurement models that you are going to do in SEM. Now, there are two kinds of uh, indicators, or we can also say there are, yeah, there are two kinds of indicators that we uh, usually talk about in uh, structural equation modeling. Uh, most of the actual work that is done uh, in uh, SEM software, okay, especially the measurement model part, the measurement models are always reflective in nature. So when we talk about measurement model, uh, it is always reflective in nature. Now let me explain what is a reflective uh, indicator. Now, if you see this diagram, and this is from a paper, Bolin and Lennox, that has been given as a reading material uh, in the reading folder. Uh, this, uh, so here, this diagram actually shows that there is a latent construct, NETA1. And, and remember this uh, NETA1 here, it is actually, uh, shown in a in a circle in a oval, which which shows that well, uh, this is a latent construct. So in this uh, software, in this terminology, uh, circle or an oval will always stand for latent construct. So this is just a notation. This is a a kind of a, a convention that is followed. Remember, a square or a rectangle in SEM always stands for an observed item. So y1, y2, y3, y4. That means there are four indicator items for this latent construct nita one. Now, why do we call these as reflective or effect indicators? Because you see that the arrows are going from emerging from this oval and going to the square. That means that these items are actually capturing the reflection of this latent construct NETA1. These items are an image. They are capturing the reflection. So this, they have a, we can also say, looking at this diagram, you can also say, that there is a common source. There is a common source for all four of these, which is NETA1. That means this latent construct. Now, all four of these items are indicators of this latent construct. So if just to sort of give you an example, if you look at motivation, for example, you say, well, let us let us talk. Uh, look at maybe three items for motivation. So one item for motivation could be, and I'm just making it up. Okay. So let us say that an item for motivation is I come to office all time. Okay. So that is one. Let us say the other item is I lose track of time when I am uh, working. So I'm motivated. Okay. And the third is. Um, I am very dedicated to my work, right? So that's the third item. Now, these are three indicators, effect indicators. So these are three indicators for motivation. 
now a high score on this item actually represents that there is a high motivation so because i am motivated please look at the choice of my words because i am motivated i come to office on time because i am motivated i lose track of time and because i am motivated i am dedicated at work so there is the high score on these observed items is because of my high motivation so they are actually reflecting my high or low motivation so that is that is what i am sort of trying to say when i model my items as a reflective indicator now because these are reflective indicators the issue of whether the scores on these items are consistent or not whether my scores on these items they co vary or not makes sense because there is a common source so one take away from this thing is we will check reliability and i will come to uh, the topic of reliability in a while the idea of reliability makes sense only if you are modeling your indicators as reflective indicators if you say that there is a common source for my items okay there is a common source and the reflection of that common source is getting captured in these items only then you should be talking about reliability in your analysis it is okay to drop some items the the last implication of this kind of an indicator is it is okay to drop some items because there is a common source and if y1 is to increase y2 will also increase y3 will also increase y4 because the increase in y1 is because of this common source and because the common source has increased its impact is going to be on y1 y2 y3 as well as y4 so in case i need to prune my item set in case i need to drop one of the items it is okay to drop if you are working with reflective indicators okay so that is the implication now this is a a diagram that i have picked up from the reading that i have given you given uh, to you to read from the chapter what is measurement okay this is figure 1.7 so you see the author talks about a construct called as preference for numerical information now this is the latent construct because there is high preference how will you read this diagram the conceptual diagram that is shown here in figure 1.7 because there is because there is high preference for numerical information pni the score on item n1 is high the score on item n2 is high the score on item n20 is high and then there is also epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 20 these are the measurement errors associated with so epsilon 1 is the measurement error associated with n1 epsilon 2 is the measurement error associated with n2 remember we had written the equation x is equal to true plus measurement error so n1 is equal to pni plus epsilon 1 n2 is equal to pni plus epsilon so this is also reflected here in the uh, reflective indicators diagram yi is equal to lambda times which is the loading item loading times the latent factor neta 1 plus epsilon i which is the measurement error epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 3 epsilon 4 right now there is another kind of of model 
and this is not used in measurement models okay this is not used in uh, uh, we will use it only if we are going to test uh, when we are going to test structural models or maybe path models and i will again explain over the course of this workshop what do we mean by path analysis and structural analysis but there are formative indicators what are formative indicators formative indicators are indicators that together make up your construct that means you are now talking about the cause of the latent construct here you were talking about the measurement of of your latent construct here you are talking about the cause of your latent construct so x1 x2 x3 x4 they are the four antecedents okay they are the four antecedents of your latent construct neta 1 okay so therefore the equation becomes neta 1 is equal to gamma 1 1 times x1 gamma 1 2 times x2 plus gamma 1 q times so also it will become gamma 1 1 x1 gamma 1 2 x2 gamma 1 3 x3 and gamma 1 4 x4 so now your construct has four indicators okay not indicator sorry they are four causal variables that is why we say cause indicators or causal indicators they are you are not talking about what are the factors that together make up your neta one right so that is what we are trying to say so now what is important for you to understand is that is why i said this is not done in measurement models so reliability testing you don't test reliability of formative indicators for the obvious reason that there is no necessity for x1 x2 x3 x4 to correlate there is absolutely no need for x1 x2 x3 x4 to or oh, very they are four independent variables that are causing your neta one okay so in respective of what happens to x1 you cannot say that because x1 is high x2 should also be high x3 should also be high and x4 should also be high so you should not do reliability testing with formative indicators it does not make any theoretical sense to be doing reliability testing with formative indicators so absolutely no no when it comes to reliability for formative indicators dropping of items is not allowed remember in reflective indicators case i told you because we are going to use it in our measurement models it is okay if you were to drop certain items it is fine because if you drop one item the reflection is anyways getting captured on the other item so it is it is okay if you were to drop one or two words or some of the items but here the moment you drop x1 you have dropped a cause for your latent factor and therefore you are going to now miss out on an important antecedent variable for your latent construct and therefore dropping of items is not allowed okay so you should not do it when you are doing your path testing or because all of them if there is a theoretical reason for you to believe that this variable should be included in my analysis you should go ahead and include it in your analysis right usually these kinds of what are the examples of these kinds of uh, indicators constructs where these kinds of indicators are used these are usually indexes so for example socio economic status human development index if you were to talk about satisfaction with 
life or life satisfaction you will say okay life satisfaction is made up of various kinds of satisfactions and and so you add them up and, and so. okay so usually when you talk about index any particular index you talk about formative indicators okay now validity and psychological meaning cannot be judged from item covariance because this does not make any sense uh, these are not indicators of the latent construct they are the cause of the latent construct so it is you are not talking about the measurement of the latent construct here without any external criteria it is psychologically uninterpreted what does this mean that means if you were to model this diagram you will need to also model the measurement of this latent factor that means you should if you were to just do this diagram with one oval and these four boxes the software will give you an error and it will not be able to run because it will ask you what is the measurement of this oval this is not the measurement what you are telling me here what you are defining in this model is the antecedent what is the antecedent uh, uh, what are the antecedent variables for this latent construct but you have to tell me how do i measure this so you need to specify the measurement model and that is what i have written here that you need to show external criteria means there should be some paths going out from this oval here we are seeing paths coming in you should also see some paths or arrows going out from the oval only then the software will be able to run this particular model it is psychologically uninterpretable that means the software will not run and it is under identified in isolation if you do not if you do not give these uh, specify the measurement uh, uh, model or paths going out from the oval the software will give you an error okay uh, and it will not run okay 